In this video, I want to tell you what you need to know about Java Records, a new language feature that is there since JDK 16 and now publicly available so you can use this as a regular feature. So Java Records, as the JEP specifies, are classes that act as transparent carriers for immutable data. In other words, data transfer objects. What we have or what we can specify in a Java code, for example, is to have a hello world class that has something like a, a private string hello world or something like a greeting and a, a recipient, which then, as you probably have specified many times, we could have as sort of um, objects, as plain old Java object that specifies getters and setters, hash code equals to string and all of these things that you would need, maybe some custom constructors to work with it just in a very basic way. This is why Java often has been called to be verbose. So this is a lot of stuff that you can define even more so we can uh, define all the other methods or we use now a new sort of language feature and then says, well, we say instead of public class, we say record and then the um, specification is as follows, that we define the fields in this header definition. So sort of like this, hello world, string greeting, string recipient. What this does, it already, well, generates a lot of things for us. So then we have, well, a class that has two fields, two um, private final fields and accessor methods and two string and hash code and equals. So what we need here, for example, we could say new hello world and then we say, for example, hello world. And with this, we can already say, well, please try to print it and now run this example. So what we will see, there is even a two string that has been uh, defined for us greeting hello world that then also we could use. So we can say greeting um, recipient, for example, hello world uh, recipient, something like this please make a string out of that as well and then emit this to system out as well and then we can have hello world so we can access our uh, data what we just defined here in these methods so that is then part of our hello world uh, class so in other words what are records according to this uh, jep records are classes that extend um, java lang record all records are implicitly final, so they can't be abstract. abstract. Um, all uh, records, they can't declare uh, or you can't declare fields other than in the header. So the fields are there in the header and that's it. Uh, records also can't declare native methods. If you don't know what a native method is, that is good. Lucky you. <laughs> and well, um, records can define static methods, fields, initializers, so static members. That is possible. Methods can have interfaces as well. And um, also uh, records can have nested types, including a nested record classes. And also all these records will have, as we just uh, briefly have seen, uh, private final fields for all of these things that we specify in the header. They have public accessor methods. We just use them in our code and they have a canonical constructor. So just to construct in the same signature as this header with all these fields and uh, well equals hash code to string and also you have some more possibilities to then just define so for example you can define uh, methods here of course your own methods that you would like um, to have so for example um, hello world you can say um, something like public string greet and then whether or not that makes sense you could say well just give me the a greeting you could use the field or the method uh, doesn't really matter here and say okay give uh, me this greeting plus the recipient so then we could change that to uh, this method greet and invoke this and then of course this method will be invoked uh, with this data accordingly so of course that works with regard regards to constructors there's also an interesting well thing available we could say for example we define um, our own constructor so we can define custom constructors uh, here or there is another interesting uh, thing available we can say um, define this uh, here as a, a constructor that is a compact uh, uh, constructor so called so you can actually well define some own uh, things that you would uh, that you would want uh, for example you could say well uh, if for example a uh, greeting equals hello and uh, recipient equals world then you throw an exception you say that's uh, too boring um, and that's it so you can uh, define this actually 
and uh, make this uh, public here. And then this sort of changes or enhances uh, this canonical constructor in a way that this is a shortcut of defining such a constructor as you would um, expect it and then also accessing um, the fields down there. So that's the same as if down there you can even um, uh, convert this in your IDE. So that's the same as that down there. Afterwards, you would have um, the assignment but let's do this uh, for now. So that is sort of um, a shorthand to well inject some more code here. So if we say, well, we run this and now hello world still works, but if we make hello world uppercase, then it will throw an exception because that is now uh, invoked in our constructor. So this works, but also would work if we say, well, we would like to uh, change uh, this. So for example, a recipient would then be overwritten with something like uh, to uppercase and we do this so if we run this again then you can also change um, well the, these fields or change what is here in the constructor but of course you have to uh, take a little bit care what you're doing here so also you can define well other constructors or change them just as uh, regular in, in Java code but this is just another sort of nice shorthand method of writing these canonical constructors. In general all the other methods and members that are defined automatically can be overridden just if you define them yourself so that works. You can also have a look um, at the corresponding JEP, the description how records work internally and what is possible there but for the most basic use case and what is really helpful in your code and you might have seen this in your code as well is just that we can use these records to define data transfer objects to just make our code much more concise and readable and also to improve well how we use these types because quite often we make use of a collection type or a string when it would be more sensible from a domain perspective to actually use a proper type but as we know Java can be um, a little bit verbose and then these records help us a lot to use this record records types and define them in our code where then just we are really specific about the actual type. For example, it can be a combination of two a type sort of like a tuple for these records are just perfect. So you can uh, try this out yourself if you use JDK 16 or a newer uh, Java version and I really encourage you to do so. And if this was helpful and fun to watch, I would really appreciate a like. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.